Hi everyone, welcome to Occupational Therapy 226. This is OT in Pediatrics, and today we're gonna to be exploring the movement competency. So basically what you're gonna be doing is taking a client, uh, in this case your uh, classmate, from prone on a mat to standing. And that is going to go through a number of different positions. So the client will start off prone, You'll take them up to propped on elbows, then side sitting, quadruped, kneeling, tall kneeling, half kneel, and finally to stand. We'll also be going through this in class. You'll have a lot of opportunity to practice. So this video is for your reference and will tell you some of the ins and outs of what you're going to need to do. Before we do the demo, I just want to bring your attention to the fact that this technique and, and many of the facilitation uh, movements and positions that I use are taken from Neurodevelopmental Treatment, or NDT, which was developed by Carl and Berta Bobath in the 1940s. So there's some concepts that you can uh, that you can integrate with this video and also with all of your handling of your clients. Base of support, so where am I, how, how wide am I, how stable am I, and also the base of support of your client. Uh, body segment alignment, so we're looking for the client to be in better and more natural alignment, even if they have movement synergies or they have uh, some sort of neuromotor disorder. Muscle activation, so our hands are actually going to help the client to, uh, to pull their uh, muscles into action. Center of gravity, that has to do with balance, again, both for the therapist and for the client. So you'll notice I'm talking about both the client and the therapist. It's really important when you're doing handling that you are aware of and protecting your own body as well as being aware of and protecting your client's body. Weight shift is the next concept, and that's the idea that if we are um, fully weighted on both sides of our body, we cannot move. We must unweight one side of the body, say for walking, in order to take a step forward. So we'll look at that with the competency. And then finally, hand placement and facilitation. And we'll be doing more of this in class, um, but just to start, we want to have uh, hands that are soft. And what that means is that uh, when you're nervous, you tend to tighten your hands and make them super stiff. You also tend to grasp or grip the client. And we need to be aware of that and take the nervousness or anxiety out of our own body so we don't convey it to the client. Now, soft hands also means that you're firm enough so that the client feels supported. So just a couple concepts, and like I said, we'll go through more of this uh, when we're working. The one other thing that I, I wanna talk to you about uh, before we get started is just keeping your body safe. So what does that mean? Well, it means um, that you're gonna protect your back, right? You're gonna lift with your legs. You're always gonna have the client close to you. And uh, for newer therapists, this can feel a little bit uncomfortable or like you're in the other person's space. Um, I, I totally understand that. And you'll see that um, when I demo, I am very close to the client and that actually feels more secure for them and I'm lifting a load that's close to me, so it's also protecting my body. Uh, finally, when you're uh, lifting or when you're moving a client, you wanna have a flat back, so you don't wanna be slumped over. You wanna keep your posture upright and, and your body protected. All right, so let's get started. Now let's see what it looks like to go from prone to standing. Now that you've seen what it looks like for me to go from prone to standing, let's see what it looks like to have someone else go from laying down to standing up. 
This is Dr. Courtney Boitano, and she's gonna be helping me out today. Uh, we're gonna watch her go from prone to stand and see how she does it the same as I do, how she does it differently, and how it may be the same or different from you. So just go ahead, lay down, stand up as you normally would. Now that you've seen me go from prone to stand and Courtney go from prone to stand, stop the video and try it yourself. Try not to think about it too much. Just lay down and stand up and see which movements you do and which ones you might skip and why. Uh, then you can analyze it and we'll talk about it in class as well. Now let's see what it looks like to help a client go from prone to standing. All right, Courtney, we're gonna help you stand up. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, put your elbows right underneath you. Nice job. Okay, go ahead and sit up. There you go. Go ahead and put this hand down. Mm -hmm. And up on all fours. All right. Let's have you sit back on your feet. Great. And now kneel up real tall. Nice job. Okay, I'm gonna have you pull this foot up. Nice. We're gonna go all the way up. You ready? Here we go. Okay, and bring that foot up to meet the other one. All right, great. Nice job. So we're gonna now break down all of the movements going from prone to standing, and I'll give you some tips and tricks so that you have some more information about how to maneuver all of this. We'll also have ample time for you and your instructor to practice in class. And a uh, couple points. One is that if, uh, if Courtney couldn't move, I would not be doing this with her, right? So your client does need to have some voluntary movement and you need to be working on this change of position going to stand. The other thing is sometimes, not always, you'll have a client who has one-sided paralysis or weakness. In this case, we're gonna say that Courtney has left-sided weakness, and I'll show you um, some of why I uh, am on her left side and how I support her. So you always wanna be on the client's affected side. All right, let's try it out, you ready? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and lay down. So our first move is from prone to propped on elbows. And what I'm gonna do is a bilateral grasp over her shoulders. I'm gonna uh, be relatively firm, but I'm not gonna dig into her clavicles. And I'm gonna pull straight up bilaterally. She's going to put her elbows underneath her shoulders. Sometimes uh, the elbows will be splayed out and I can't move her unless I shift her weight, right? So this is one of those weight shifts I was talking to you about. So I pull her over and then I can easily tuck her elbows in so that they're underneath her shoulders. The next move is uh, for most students or many students the most challenging because it's a big move. We're doing different things with the two sides of our body, two sides of her body. Um, so. Uh, left hand goes on the deltoid, right hand, the heel of the hand goes on the meaty part of her hip, and then my fingers just wrap around. So I could feel her hip bone, but I'm not digging into it, right? So we have soft hands. What I'm gonna do is lift up with this hand and up with this hand and also pivot. Now watch this a couple times because I'm also gonna be getting out of the way so that she doesn't end up sitting on my lap. Okay. So here we go. All right, so we make sure that there's weight bearing through the arm. Um, I'm also pushing down to make sure that she's sitting on both hips and she's now in a side sit position. Now what happens if she, um, with her left-sided weakness, collapses? Here I am, right? I'm already on her left side and I can help stabilize uh, generally above the elbow. Next, um, we're just gonna put her hand down. Doesn't need to be parallel, it doesn't need to be in the same plane, it just needs to be on the ground because we're gonna go into quadruped. 
The grass for this is, again, bilateral. I'm going to use soft hands curved around the meaty part of her hips. And I'm going to lift and pivot. Great. OK. Um, for somebody that uh, doesn't have a lot of movement, that's going to take a little bit of a lift, right? So don't be afraid to, um, to put your body into the movement as well. From here, we go to sitting back on heels. And uh, we could do it in a lot of different ways. I can be to the front of her. I could be to the side of her. Um, but I'm getting, giving her some pressure back. Um, if someone can't sit on their heels, we can do a modified version. Then we're going to go into tall kneel. So again, a couple different uh, techniques for this. We can either do bilateral deltoid and some compression and stand up, or go ahead and sit down again. Or depending on our size differential, like Courtney and I are a couple inches different from each other, but if I was working with a child, be super different, right? So I can also go to the inferior border of the scapula and up. OK, once she's in a tall kneel, this is kind of the second um, most complicated move because we want to get this leg up, right? We want to get the foot on the floor with the knee bent. Now, she's not going to be able to do this if she's weight bearing on both knees. So what we need to do is unweight it. So I'm going to stand pretty close to her. Um, and in fact, almost my whole side is, is pressed up against her. Again, this feels intimate, but it also uh, makes the client feel more secure or encourages them to feel more secure. So my hand comes around. I'm going to lean, 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 lean until her foot just wants to come up. And that actually happens. Um, we're also going to, if we need to, we can tap the leg or we can help it up. So go ahead and put that back down for a second. So if I needed to, I could say, bring your leg up. Great. Um, and I'm keeping her against my body so she doesn't go anywhere. Now you'll notice that, are you OK in this yeah. position for a sec? Mm -hmm. OK. You'll notice that um, I keep a hand on her. It's not, um, it's not a weird hand, like I don't have to you know, walk my hands around. But I'm keeping a hand on her as I move around just so that she knows that I'm here. You don't need to do this 100% of the time, but it does give the client the sense that they have support and that support is consistent. So something to think about. It's probably going to be a little bit down the road for you as you practice and get more comfortable. All right, last maneuver. I'm going to um, take a wide stance with her. I'm going to go with a super flat back and I'm going to, for this move, go underneath her scapulas. And notice that my butt is really far out. And I'm going to lift and help her stand up. Now, I'm not moving out of the way right away. What I'm going to do is get her feet um, parallel. So take a, yep, great. And make sure that they are, um, that she's steady on her feet. And then I can move to the side. And you're standing up. <laughs> Yay, good job. <laughs> And that's it. Um, we'll practice a lot more in class, as I said. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, Courtney. You're welcome.